Um, <laughs> ask for roll call from city clerk. Roll call, Mayor Garrett. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Cantor. Present. Council Member Brock. Present. Council Member Ferguson. Present. And Council Member Stallings. Present. Madam Mayor, do you have a quorum? Thank you. And I invite everyone to say the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the, the flag, flag of the United States, States of America and, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We'll do the approval of the agenda. Uh, we'll do the consent agenda, so that'll be the approval of minutes from August 20th, 2018 um, for the study session and for the council meeting. And we just got updated mm -hmm. minutes from the city council meeting, so. From August 20th. Yeah. Yep. But that, that's wrapped up all into the consent agenda. So, yep. Anyone want so moved. So moved. Second. So is this approval of the agenda? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank so you. it's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? That's Next, we'll have the consideration of the approval of disbursement reports. First one will be the period covering from August 1st to August 15th, 2018, in the amount of $49,576.07. So, so moved. I have a second? Second. Any questions? Concerns, thoughts, hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? That disbursement report is approved. Second one is a period covering from August 16th, 2018 to August 31st, 2018 in the amount of 465264 wait a minute, $465,264.41. So moved. Second. It's been moved and second. Is there any uh, discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? That disbursement report is approved. Next, we will consider acceptance of the departmental reports. Second, uh, is there any questions, concerns, discussions? I don't, I don't have any uh, questions. Just um, I just noticed, and it just grabbed me because it was a child that parents just stay aware of watching their children and the cell phone. Um, I, I guess there was an incident where um, a young girl was getting direction from a from a, a stranger to send seeing pictures so I just felt necessary to remind us to be aware to watch our children our girls with the phones and the boys so, that's it. is there um, thank you is there any other discussion hearing none all in favor say aye aye, aye. all opposed that is accepted this is the time where if anyone in the audience would like to come forward and <laughs> say anything that's saying that there is no one here today we'll just uh, keep moving <laughs> um, there is no public hearing so we'll get right into our action requests first yep. it's right up there okay yep. Piece for your read board. Yeah. <laughs> 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 um, uh, Southfield Fire Chief. I'll be darned. It's there right. it is. There it is. <laughs> Good evening, Council. 
Good evening. Good evening. Um, I'd like to give you an update on, on the fire department, what's what's going on. So currently we're we're right on schedule for um, runs about what we had last year. For our medical runs, we've had 232 um, this year so far and 107 fire calls. Um, from last year, we had 351 medicals and 125 um, fire calls for the year. So the fire calls are up um, this year and I contributed to three causes um, right now. Uh, people are still using uh, real candles is, is, is causing uh, an issue for us to come out um, to have fire calls. Also, we have um, cooking fires. People are, we are still having a lot of cooking fires, um, people um, frying foods in the kitchen and, and also fireplaces. Um, this is the time now of the year where people start um, actually getting their fireplaces up and going and that's also been a, uh, a, cause, a cause now to, for the increase in the calls. So the fire department has a new computer aided dispatching system this year that we, that we started using. We put computers in all of our fire engines and all of our EMS trucks. Um, we have a new GIS uh, mapping system that actually maps out the calls for us. So that's been a, a real good improvement. We have an ISO rating of a two now. We, were, we had a three, now we have a two. Now this is how they set the insurance rate for all the commercial and, and the residential. So I mean, I'm urging everyone, and that was went into effect on May 1st. So I'm urging all the residents, you can call your insurance agencies and they may give you a, a break on your insurance, not guaranteed, but that's something that you can do and let them know that you now are an ISO 2 um, rating. Um, this is another record year for Southfield. Calls are up about 8% um, for the year right now. We, we instituted a new software program that all of our systems are now talking to each other. So it's been a great administrative tool for me to um, budget and, um, and replacing, replacing equipment and actually uh, looking at new equipment. And we've also bought um, active assailant um, gear for all the firefighters and paramedics. And hopefully we'll never have to use them, but if we need to, we, we have the equipment now. Um, we're, we're doing a lot of um, collaboration and, and, and uh, training with, uh, with, with Chief McGee. We're, we're doing CPR, AED, hazmat training, a um, little bloodborne pathogen training also. So that he's been a, a great partner in, in public safety and we look forward to continuing more training. Um, we did hire 16 new firefighters this year. Um, we're going to hire another six on October 15th. Um, like I said, we're, we're, we're going to be young. Um, we were losing 350 years of experience this year alone. So we do realize we're putting a big emphasis on education and training this year. Um, uh, Mayor Garrett's going to join us for our Fire Ops 101 program, which is going to give her an opportunity to don real fire gear and go into a real fire. You did not tell um, me that until today. We've, uh, <laughs> that was a little surprise to her. It's a little hard to get her involved. But um, it's gonna, I'm looking forward to a really good day. So what happens is, is that um, us and neighboring chiefs got together and we invited our elected officials to come out and actually be apart and see what the firefighters are doing day in and day out what they experience so that I'm looking forward to a, a great day there um, we are doing fire inspections um, the area we're working on now is from I-696 to Lincoln so um, the businesses will be getting a, a fire inspection in that area that's happening we're doing our second hydrant check we check the hydrants three times a year so we're currently on our second check so we will be checking every hydrant in the city we will not be flowing the hydrants but we will be checking each hydrant so we don't want to disrupt the system right now but we will be um, looking for um, hydrants that need to be repaired um, we did um, purchase one new ladder truck it's going to be it's going to take about a year to build 345 days and we did get four new engines also um, so we're looking forward to those also next year so just a reminder i will be coming out with a preventive fire tips later this year just, just remember, the, the, the candles, don't, don't walk away or leave the house with candles lit if you must use candles. I mean, now you can switch to a lot of the, um, the, the, candles, the, the, the candles that aren't real candles. You know, you can, you can use those. The cooking fires we're still seeing in the house. And, and make sure that you clean your, the ductwork and stuff for your fireplace. 
Um, we also uh, urge you, we've had three significantly large fires this year, and what's been a lot of help to us is just the involvement of the neighbors. Um, I urge you to get to know your neighbors, know, know if they're home or not home, how many kids, dogs. Um, that's been a real good help to us if, in, a, in an emergency. That's been really good for us. Um, we, we urge you to have a, a working smoke detector, a working carbon monoxide detector. Remember, 10 years is uh, the lifespan of a smoke detector. Um, you know, I'm, I don't know if I can do it for every residence, but if you call, if you call 248-796-5601, um, you can talk to our secretary, Tammy, and, and if you need us, someone to come out and help you with the smoke detector, we're able to send an investigator out and maybe and, and be able to help you um, with that. And um, October month is cancer month. The, you will see all the firefighters wearing pink this year. So um, I just want everyone to know that we're here to serve you. I think we have a, a good plan in place. Our response time is down. Unfortunately, calls are up, but we're here for you. You know, in the, in the time of need. Can Can you speak directly to the cell phone charging scenario and also anything electronic such as laptops and all that right well i, I think the first thing with with any of that is in in a, in a moderation you, you got to remember not to charge charge any equipment any electronic equipment like on your bed on on your couch you know it needs to be on a on a on a service like your kitchen counter um, what, what's happened is individuals walk away and and for whatever reason it may it may cause a fire and same thing in your car if you're if you're having your charger plugged up even though your phone's not in it and some of the older cars it's still drawing um, current so it's still still getting hot mm -hmm. so a lot of the young adults in our in our community they're charging their phones and sleeping with the phone under their pillow to wake them up and so for their alarms that's a bad thing put it on the nightstand do not charge your phone or computer on your bed. Um, it's a very uh, it's a new thing that we're seeing, um, and it's and it can be it can be deadly. And that's once again one of the reasons why you you definitely need a working smoke detector. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I appreciate it. All right. Is the plan once once you finish with the fire inspections on the south side of, of 696 to move to the north? Yes. Um, yes. I mean it's going to take time. Sure. I, I currently. I currently have three inspectors um, right now, but we I will be putting um, six in that in, in, in that um, division. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about the hydrants? The hydrants. You no, mentioned that you're not okay. So you're not all oh, the buildings. So you're not going to do the flow. You do the flow once a year or something. We don't flow the hydrants. Uh, we don't flow them. We, we look for. Them. We we don't flow them. Well, we have in the past, we, we, we have flowed them. Now, I make sure that we, we, we do make sure that we have a, uh, an accurate flow in, 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 in the city. But as far as flowing every hydrant, no. We don't, we don't flow them, um, you know. So I look, we look for leaks. If the ones that are, if we find something that's leaking, then we, we open it and, and make sure it, 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 it's, it's working properly mm -hmm. and, and reporting it. So you don't have to flow it to make sure there's no. We don't. Coming. We don't. That's, no. That's, we okay. there's a frost line in there, oh, okay. and so we actually can check to make sure the water's below the frost line mm. for the winter is what we check. Now, if the water's above that, or we, we obviously, if it, or if it's obvious signs of um, that it's leaking, then we okay. then we can re Thank repair you. that. Can any uh, youngster contact you regarding um, a career as far as you know what it's going to take to become a person like you? Oh yes, oh yes, okay. definitely. We are still hiring. Um, like I said, this year we're gonna we're gonna replace um, over twenty percent this this year. Um, but yes, we are still hiring. Um, they can definitely contact us. And that number, you know, you can you can look at the um, city of Southfield's website, mm -hmm. or you can call two four eight seven nine six five six five zero. Great, thank you. Should you be it. on our website? Yes, I should. <laughs> <laughs> I think. Okay. <laughs> Yes. Okay. All right. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for the information. Thank really you. appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. So, I'm doing that for my sister who's not here. So mm -hmm. this will be for her. Okay. So the next thing that we're going to be doing is a proclamation for um, or proclaiming South. Why do I keep saying Southfield? It's the chief. 
<laughs> I think that, and technically, the that's way that's what that I you, see when I look at the it. The way that you're supposed to do it as an alphabetical, like there should come first. I'm just saying. That's how I was brought up. But anyway, I'm sorry. <laughs> I have no idea why I keep saying that. So, this is to, the the next action request is to proclaim September as a National Suicide Prevention Awareness Month, and I think this is our. Second, yeah, this yeah. is only yeah. our second annual time yes. of doing this, and yep. so it was um, something that I requested to do this only because it's something near and dear to my heart. Because many of you all know, four years ago, I lost my nephew um, to suicide, and it's something that um, people need to be aware of the fact that it suicide has no color, it has no social economic background, no age limit. Um, it, it's, it affects everyone. And actually, last year when we had the suicide awareness and vigil, and a lot of people came out, it was very interesting to find out all of the people that are even in our own community that have um, that are survivors of suicide. They're survivors of uh, suicide attempts. And the one thing that I can say that I have become very um, conscious about when it comes to suicide is that we have to be careful with each other. You don't know what people are going through. You don't know what is sustaining them every day. And it's just, you know, it's more than just being kind. It's also being gentle with people. You never know if you are the person that can save a life or if you are a person that can cause someone to take someone over the edge. So mm -hmm. that is my goal as long as I have life in my breath to always make people aware of suicide awareness. And um, it just so happened it's also the month that I did lose my nephew, so it's, it's a bittersweet month for me, period. So, um, and I'm pleased and I'm very happy that my colleagues have agreed to um, have a resolution for Lathrop. I almost said Southwell, but I did not. <laughs> for Lathrop to have uh, the resolution for the Suicide Prevention Awareness Month. And seeing that it is a very uh, short resolution, I will read it. And it's where it is September is National Suicide Prevention Awareness Month. And where is, oops, this is falling down. Where is each year more than 44,965 individuals die by suicide? And where is more than 90% of children who die by suicide have a mental health condition. And where is public awareness of this tragic problem, education and treatment are the key to preventing further suffering and loss of life. And now, therefore, be it resolved that Mayor Michael Garrett and the Lathrop Village City Council do hereby proclaim September is Suicide Prevention Awareness Month in the city of Lathrop Village, Michigan. And all of us have signed it. So now, if anyone would like to Make a motion. I make a motion to proclaim that September is the National Suicide Prevention Awareness Month. Second. Okay, it has been uh, moved and second. Is there any discussion? I just want to give kudos again to our police department. There was a suicidal uh, interruption in the police report even uh, this month again. So you're right, it's in our community. You know, you just can't assume that it's, it's, um, you know, curtailed to one one group of people or whatever. So, kudos to um, good job. Is there any other discussion? So it's been moved and second. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed. Motion. I shouldn't say motion, but the resolution has carried. Thank you. Next on our agenda is a proclamation of September as a National Recovery Month. And I will hand that over to Cheryl. Okay. I think they contacted you. Yes, we were contacted by the Oakland County Health Network relative to um, support for the National Recovery Month, and they asked that we join in um, adopting a resolution in that regard. Would you like me to read it? That would be fine. Okay. And it reads, whereas September 2018 is National Reco Recovery Month, whereas one in five teens abuse prescription drugs before the age of 13, and whereas preventing and overcoming substance 
use disorders is essential to achieving healthy lifestyles both physically and emotionally. And whereas September 21, 2018 has been designated for Oakland County's 11th Annual Substance Use Recovery Celebration and Walk, now therefore be it resolved that on behalf of Mayor Garrett and the Lathrop Village Council, we are extending our sincere appreciation for the dedicated and devoted services being performed by Oakland County Health Network to increase awareness of substance use and the need for services. And it's signed by Mayor Garrett and all members of City Council. Thank you. We'll make a motion to make uh, September uh, National Recovery Month in Lathrop Village. Second. It's been moved and second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Just proclaim that September is also National Recovery Month. And next, we have a consideration of approval for IT rights service contract. Mayor and Council, you have before you um, a service contract so. proposal <laughs> from IT Right, which is our service provider for the repair and maintenance of computer equipment and computer networks. And presently, they provide those services for our administrative office and the police department was asking to have those services extended to cover um, their computers and networks as well. They um, also provide um, remote backup of the systems. So the combined services is an amount of $8,835 that reflects a savings of $465. So that's before you for your consideration for the one-year contract. Um, you can get out of the contract with 30 days notice. Thank you. Who would like to make the motion? I would move approving the IT rights service contract in the amount of $8,835. Second. Second. We moved and second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. All opposed? The contract has been approved. Next, we have consideration of the approval for the Prosper Magazine ad. Mary and Council, um, you have before you consideration of um, taking out the ad in the Prosper Magazine, which is a collaboration between our, mag our HOUR magazine and the um, County of Oakland um, to help promote the whole region. And this is an opportunity to have a um, community highlight within that magazine publication. You did the same thing um, last year, and it seemed to have received a positive response. So they are asking for you to, again, um, take out the, the section to highlight the wonderful things in Lakewood Village. And the amount is $1,750. Thank you. Do I have a motion for it? So moved. Second. It's been moved and second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? The ad is approved. Next, action item F, consideration of the approval of the first reading of an ordinance to amend Chapter 54, Solid Waste, amending Article 2, Collection and Disposal. All right, Second, uh, go ahead. Uh, Madam Mayor, this, this was brought to the city's attention uh, from the code officer as well as from numerous complaints from residents uh, about trash and animals, critters getting into bag trash that's either left out uh, specifically with respect to the commercial district um, left out prior to collection before their dumpsters are emptied uh, or before trash day and then uh, some of the residents you know putting their trash in bags it has created a, a varmint issue so this ordinance is uh, the ordinance amendment is in response to that uh, presently the ordinance require or allows for trash to be placed directly on the curb in a plastic bag uh, this amendment is going to require that all residents and commercial businesses place their trash inside of a trash can prior to pickup, uh, as well as the non-residential, the commercial uh, properties will have to have their trash stored in an enclosed either can or dumpster at all times, not just on trash day. So um, this, uh, there are two types of cans that are going to be allowed. The first is a, your standard 35-gallon uh, trash can that you can pick up at Home Depot. Uh, the other that uh, 
Tringali Sanitation will allow for is a 96, a really large 96 wheeled can, a 96 gallon wheeled can uh, that has a, a mechanism on the front that their trucks can just pick up and dump. So there is a weight limit on the 35 gallon cans of 60 pounds. If they're heavier than that, they won't pick them up. Uh, there is no weight limit on the wheeled cans because again, it's a mechanical <coughs> device that picks them up. <coughs> So moved. Second. It's been moved and second. Is there any discussion? I do have a question. Do we have an idea of how much those cans are? The 96 gallon ones? Yeah. Um, I know from personal experience, mine cost about $100 to, to purchase the, the large can from my trash provider. Okay. But Home Depot, is, you can also get the I think I don't know what a standard trash yeah. can costs. Standard. Trash I'm, I'm just saying the ones that they can actually put use Tringali can use their trucks and pick it up with. You can't. I'm not sure if you can use the cans from Home Depot to have it picked up like that. You know what I'm saying? The way that our recycling. Yeah, the 96 just gallon ones. Uh, my understanding is that Tringali will only pick them up if they're Tringali cans. Right. That's my point. Okay. Uh, I don't know specifically how much they cost, but my trash provider has a very similar uh, 96 gallon can. Uh, where I live, and it cost me $100 for the can, so. We're talking residents, right, mm -hmm. right now. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So, I mean, the, the cans that I have right now, they're not the fancy ones that they They'll can lift up, but I can still use yeah. what yeah, I have from Home still Depot, pick up, right? In, in fact, everyone okay. will have to, at the very minimum, pick up a Home Depot can like yours yeah. okay. to put their trash out. Can the, can the businesses use a 96-gallon one if they want, or no? The businesses can, yes. Yeah, okay, I thought you, the way you said that, it made me think you, they couldn't. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that this is something that we are not looking to do until, or go into effect until 2019, January 2019. Correct. Typically, uh, an ordinance requires a first and a second reading, so tonight is the first reading. Uh, it, depending on the outcome of the motion, it will be scheduled for a second reading at the next uh, regular council meeting, and we can, uh, or council has indicated that they're going to like a, a fact, request an effective date of January 1st, 2019, so that'll give residents and businesses time to go out, pick up a trash can from Home Depot. Or I keep plugging Home Depot. You can go to Lowe's, you can go to Ace, you can go to any little part of Walmart, wherever you want. Um, or or uh, purchase the can from Tringali. And there will be information about acquiring those cans, I'm sure, on our website. Our website. Or we'll oh, they can go to Menards Sandy. also. Or Menards, Menards. Yeah. Just making sure we, we cover them all. <laughs> cover them all. No one gets in trouble. Thank you. Or Ace. Ace. And, we, <laughs> Ace. and we will make sure to, we talked about earlier, that mm -hmm. the citizens will have uh, good information and time enough to I guess we'll purchase. make every effort um, from the point of adoption to the mm -hmm. effective date in January to notify res residents. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Uh, the reading was approved. Next, action request G. Uh, we are just voting on this, or is this a approval? This is just voting. It's voting. Okay. So this is the official ballot for the Michigan Municipal League Liability and Property Pool 2019 Pool Director Election. And the two people, I'm going to have to read over your shoulder. Okay. The two people Robert Clark. Um, to be considered as Robert Clark, Mayor, City of Monroe, Paula Zelenko, I hear someone tell me, yeah, that's right. Mayor, City of Burton. Mm -hmm. Who would like to make the motion? So moved. Second. It's been moved and second. Is there any discussion? It says there's an option to write in the name of one or more candidates, but... Would you like to write your name? No. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? I forget I'd read the whole thing, but it's okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Then they have our vote. We'll know at some other point whether or not they won. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm sure they will. Okay. That's all our action requests. Um, city Administrator. Thank you. 
Um, we re received some inquiries relative to the property on Lincoln Street that um, had the fire, mm -hmm. and I've been advised by the building official that they have obtained the demolition permit as well as the utility clearances, so they should be starting the process of the demolition any day. Um, following that is our understanding that they plan to reconstruct the, um, the building, the house. Mm -hmm. Also, um, I shared with you a draft of the um, communication that will be going out to all of the residents relative to the utility service line warranty program that will allow them to obtain a, um, a warranty for the water and sewer lines if they so choose. It's an optional program. It will be available to all residents. And the food truck Friday has um, the season has ended. We did end it a little bit early. There wasn't a large participation as the, um, the weather became cooler. Um, so we'll look at how we might try to reinvigorate that next year or if we need to be doing something differently to um, have options available for local residents. The farmers market, the last one is this Wednesday and there is a beautiful basket of many of the fruits, vegetables and baked goods and a t-shirt and I don't know what else. Um, the, there'll be a basket raffle. You have to be present to win, but the tickets are free and they're available at the, um, the front desk in City Hall, so we invite everyone to come by, get their raffle ticket, and the drawing, I believe, is 5 o'clock on Wednesday. Um, again, um, Monday, October 8th, is a joint meeting with the Southfield School Board that will be at the, um, the Mint in Michigan First um, Conference Center. I've had a conversation with Oakland University relative to getting some um, students um, on board to do an internship program, so we're hoping to be able to move that forward. In regards to the staff offices, if you recall, we have two positions um, vacant presently, so I'm finalizing those um, job descriptions so we can get those posted hopefully within the next two weeks. And if you stop by the office, you may not find who you expect to find in the spaces because we've moved people around. Um, mm -hmm. But so right now, um, recreation, Molly is downstairs, and Aaron has been moved to where Ken was located. So we've shifted some people around to get some, especially synergy um, as we're trying to share responsibilities while these two positions are vacant. The Shred Day was a great success, and I don't know if Councilmember Stallings wants to speak to that, but it was a very large turnout, and um, it, people were very receptive to that service being available. Um, the 65th birthday was a huge success, and again, we want to thank the Michigan First Credit Union for being our keynote sponsor and um, donating $10,000 towards that event. And we still have t-shirts and the commemorative pins available. You can, for $5, you can get both. They're each $5 or you can get two one, for five. One $5 <laughs> bill <laughs> will get you a t-shirt and a pin. Mm, that's not bad. Mm. And the MML conference was this past week. Um, they had a lot of great information in, in, that was supportive of local communities and council members. Um, Cantor and Ferguson were also in attendance, so I'm sure you're going to have lots of ideas that you want me to be working on. Yes. <laughs> yeah, but, we do. But it's always, it's always a great opportunity to talk with other communities on what they're doing and how they are implementing and just get, um, just generate some new ideas and energy. So it was a, a fun and informative time there. And I think that concludes my report. Thank you. City Attorney? Nothing for me tonight. Oh, wow. Hmm. Okay. Um, reports from boards, commissions, committees. Uh, Planning Commission. We had a meeting last month where uh, the uh, uh, potential gas station in the existing Verizon building south of 696 was discussed for a second or third time, I believe. Third time, I believe. This was their first official. Yeah. They had a conceptual review in front yeah. of the Planning Commission and then one in front of the council. Yeah, and it was, it was a, a very, very good meeting. Uh, there were a lot of uh, residents in attendance. Uh, there was cooperation on both sides. Uh, I thought it was great because both sides listened to what the other side had to say, and uh, it was a very productive meeting. Um, as an outcome of that meeting, uh, the Planning Commission has required a uh, traffic study 
uh, to assess how uh, traffic on Southfield Road will be affected by uh, putting in a, a service station uh, at that location. Um, we also requested a um, on-site traffic flow um, in analysis, well not necessarily an analysis, but uh, proof of the ability for the tankers to be able to successfully navigate uh, on the property uh, the way it's currently designed, as well as uh, proof that the um, uh, supplier will be using the smaller uh, tanker trucks to uh, uh, fill the tanks at the, at the, the station. Um, there were a variety of, of concerns that were brought up by the uh, by the residents um, and, and the you know, variety of concerns first brought up by uh, the Planning Commission, including uh, placement of bollards, hours, uh, the fact that uh, Coral Gables will need to be widened to support uh, the traffic and the trucks. A portion uh, of Coral Gables. Poor, poor, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, portion, a very small portion of... Uh, Coral Gables, uh, where it abuts South Hill Road, will, will need to be widened. Um, and then uh, uh, ensuring that a, um, uh, the rim light around the canopy doesn't face the, uh, the residents. Um, the residents also shared a variety of concerns, uh, including uh, not having any speakers or TVs in the uh, tanks other than those that are required by law, uh, in the pumps, uh, other than those that are required by law. Um, the cleanup schedule of, of, of the lot, uh, which the um, uh, owner uh, suggested a two-day, twice-a-day cleanup uh, by his crew. Um, and then there was also discussion in terms of what happens if the business should fail uh, with respect to the underground tanks. And the um, uh, applicant indicated that it's a state law that the tanks have to be either removed or filled with concrete within uh, one year of the, of the closing of, of the station. So. Um, so we're, we're just waiting for uh, the follow-up information from the, from the applicant, and I believe that will be discussed at the next meeting. Uh, and there is no meeting tomorrow. Um, I, the applicant didn't give us anything, so there, there's nothing on the agenda, so the meeting was canceled. Miss anything? Thank you. Um, Councilman Ferguson, did you have anything? No. I, I do. Um, just to piggyback off the uh, Shred Truck Day, it was a wonderful, uh, successful event. It start, This was our third annual, and you're starting to hear stories like um, some woman, some one of the residents whose mom passed 11 years, the Shred Truck allowed her to get rid of things. You'd, be, you'd really be surprised at the stories that were starting to come out over the Shred Truck. So I really want to thank AARP and um, we had 9,000 pounds of shredded paper. That's a lot. So a lot of work, but it, it, it was worth it. Also, um, there is, I didn't mention last time that I was elected as the precinct delegate to kind of help um, encourage registering to vote and just getting out to vote. So I won't be knocking on everyone's door, but just, just trying to help uh, fulfill my role there to encourage everyone to please register, which I'm sure um, uh, our city clerk is about to talk about. So don't be surprised if you see me knocking on your door, but that's it. You're at the precinct delegate now? Mm hmm Oh, congratulations. <laughs> yeah, the shred thing was great. I just wish you would have done it one day later because I cleaned out my basement on Saturday night. I had five contractor bags full of, full of shred. I had to take it up to so cry and do it piece by piece. I guess I didn't need my uh, uh, Michigan Bell receipt bill from 1989, <laughs> so I didn't need it anymore. Yeah, see, it's weird the stories that's coming out. Yeah. Good for you. So next time do it one day later. Five later. years, five. Um, yep. Anyone else want to bring up any new business? So you know. wow. Madam oh. Clerk. Yes, thank you for this opportunity. I have uh, several announcements concerning uh, Election Day. Election Day is November 6th, and the polls open at 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. But I want to start with tomorrow we'll be celebrating the National Voter Registration Day, and that's to try to energize people to come out and be sure that you register and vote before the October 9th deadline. 
So if you have any reason that you think you may not be here or able to register by the deadline, come out tomorrow. I'm going to have a display table in the lobby, maybe a few little sweet treats here or there. <laughs> but I will have voter registration applications. I will have a sample ballot for you. And I'll be there to answer any questions you may have about the upcoming election. So please stop by. Uh, the office hours are from 8 a.m. to 4.30. I mentioned the voter registration day. Now, the last day that you can register to vote for the November 6th election is October 9th. So you can do so by stopping by the office. You can go on the city's website. There's an application there to register to vote. You can stop by any Secretary of State's office and register to vote. And also, you can go to the, the state's website. So there are several different, different options for you to, to choose from. And again, if you have any questions, I'm always here. You can give me a call. I wanted to remind you about the ballot. I want to show you. The ballot is on the website. This is the size of it. This is front, and this is the back. So I'm just going to suggest that you stop by the office, go to the website, and get a copy of this. Take it to, with you to the polls when you go in and vote. You can use it as a reference when you go and vote on Election Day. Or you can stop by and ask for an absent voter application or give me a call and I'll send you an absent voter application. On this ballot, just to remind everyone, there's no longer a section to vote straight party. So you will have to go through each and every race on the ballot and choose and make your choices. So I just wanted to bring that to your attention. I just strongly suggest that you get a head start mm -hmm. so you can do your research on the candidates. Um, just do background and all the information you need is, is, is on the website. And again, I do have the ballot on the website, a sample ballot. So I'll have some sample ballots available for you. You want to stop by tomorrow as well. So Saturday, November 3rd, I'll be in the office from 9 a.m. until 2 p.m. That's 9 a.m. until 2 p.m. That's a Saturday. That's the last day that I can mail out an absent voter ballot to you. Uh, the very, very, very last day that you can receive an absent voter ballot is the day before the election. Stop by the office anytime from 8 a.m. until 4 p.m. If you wait until the day before the election, you have to vote your ballot in the office. You can't take it home with you. So I wanted to give you that information. I made some notes here, and I think I covered everything. The number in the office here, you can reach me at 248-557-2600, extension 226. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, then also for tomorrow, the League of Women Voters is having a candidates forum tomorrow at 7 in Farmington Hills. Unfortunately, I just realized I forgot where in Farmington Hills, but uh, if you look up League, it's on, yeah, the League of Women Voters is on their website. And then Wednesday, the uh, South of Lathrop Dems Democratic Club is going to have a meet the candidates and a um, endorsement meeting in Southfield, so you can also, and this is going to be for the 46th uh, district judicial candidates are non-partisan, um, so that will be at 7 o'clock. Any other new business? Hearing none, I will take a motion for adjournment. So moved. Second. We are adjourned. Ooh. Thank you.